Okay, welcome to today. We are in my basement and what we're going to do is we're going to go over the new 1777 series. We're going to do a walkthrough of it, kind of show you how I've got it hooked up and I think it'll be, hopefully it'll be valuable for you. I think it's entertaining and uh, it's going to be good stuff. So what you can see here is this is the 1770 series and I will show you how this is all hooked up here in a second. One thing I wanted to definitely mention is these magnets um, and show you guys that these are strong magnets and you can hold your 1770 series up with them if you wanna hang it inside a panel or on a panel door while you're hooking it up, um, it has that capability. So that I think is pretty cool. The other thing, if you look here on the back, it does have a kickstand. That's what we're going to be using to kind of just prop it up today. Um, and then we are going to be hooked up to the outlet through our voltage cables, our live cable, our neutral, and then also we have a CT. We have over here that's going to be wrapped around, it's hard to see what we're doing, wrapped around one of these, and it's going to be all powering a little fan down there on the floor so that I can do a fan slash heater and so we can actually see single phase logging. So let me get this phone hooked up to the stand and then we'll get started. Okay, so we're gonna start by powering this thing on. Green light turns on for us. And the screen will boot it up here. Now, while it goes through its boot up cycle, I'm going to show you kind of the top and show you where we have what we have connected and kind of a little bit about the tool. So starting over here, we've got Ethernet port. We have USB, USB-C. We also have this right here. You'll see it says power input. Um, and if you look right, let me make sure it's in the video. I think you can just can see that. Yeah, if you look right here, you can see it can handle anything from, this power supply can handle anything from 100 volts to 600 volts. And that's going to give you flexibility in the field on what you can hook up to. And so that's the power supply input. So instead of having to run an extension cord and plug the unit in, we're going to actually run off the voltage we're measuring. And you can see the voltage we're measuring is coming in here because it's single phase. So this is our energized and this is our neutral. And both of these jumpered gives power to the unit. This could be done in three phase because again, we can handle up to 600 volts. And then over here, we've got the ground. We've got our auxiliary port. You see right here, this one has field sense built into it. Um, don't know. no. Uh, what's coming with this, but clearly because it's marked field sense, I assume there's going to be an accessory in the future that will allow you to use field sense. If you're not familiar with field sense, I made another video on what field sense is and how Fluke is going to start implementing this in more and more tools moving forward to make our lives easier in the field. Then we have current here. Again, that CT is hooked up to give us current reading. Okay. This is what the screen looks like when you turn it on, when you first start, okay? You can see we've got memory. You can look at what the various things we've got. Um, settings, this is gonna be what language you wanna speak in, what time zone you're in, so on and so forth. Communication settings, we've got ethernet automatic, radio, Wi-Fi client is off, but you could turn that on because it's got a Wi-Fi card in it. We're going to see here in a second. And then tools. Okay. If you want to update the firmware, I believe the firmware, you'll be able to update that just via putting the firmware on a USB drive, putting it in and connecting it. Never have to connect this tool to the PC if you choose not to. Okay. So let's start with the power quality. What does it look like when we start... Again, I'm using the touch screen, but you could do everything with these buttons over here if you've got gloves on in the field. Um, not a problem, or if your hands are greasy and you don't want to touch the screen. So we could select that, power quality meter. Um, actually, let's go back so I can point out this to the home screen. So 
Power quality meter, that's for instant troubleshooting. And then power quality logger, that's for long-term health analysis. So you think of power quality logging, we're gonna set it and we're gonna leave it for a day or for a week or for a month. Whereas meter, that's just gonna be, hey, we're looking at it on the screen. Either mode you can start logging from, but that's what you're gonna see. Another thing that I noticed when I first turned it on is the LED lights, some of them are green and some are not. And I, the green is indicating that everything, the meter thinks everything is hooked up correctly and you're getting good stuff. You see this current is yellow. Well, that's because I don't have any current yet. I'm gonna turn on this little heater fan and we're going to see this turn green. So the fan is on and we should see that turn green here in a second. I say that. Maybe I'm not hooked up correctly. I'm not. One second. Okay, now I am, and we have a green LED. So we're hooked up correctly. Now we can go into this. If we want to look, we can see our CT is correct. We could change this digitally. I'm going to change it back to default. And you see now we have negative current. So if we want to, if we put our CT on incorrectly and we want to flip that CT digitally, we can just hit autocorrect or click correct digitally like I did before. I'm just going to hit autocorrect and then hit done. And now we can see we have positive current, meaning our CT is correct, our voltage we've got right here, our kilowatts, so on and so forth. And you get frequency and some of these other things. You can also see phaser diagram. Phaser diagram is not very exciting with a single phase, but it's still there. Verify with scope. You can see voltage. You can also see current and voltage at the same time. I don't know if you guys can see this through my video, but man, this screen is really top-notch, high-resolution screen. One of the best screens, if not the best screen, Fluke has put in a power quality tool. Um, I think you're going to really find it delightful to use and look at when you're looking at waveforms and various numbers um, navigating through. Typology or topology. Um, if I wasn't already set up in single phase mode when I started, I could have come into here and changed that. You can see there's a lot of different options. Split phase, three phase, lots of three phase options, so on and so forth. Okay, I'm going to go back to single phase because that's what we are actually in. And at this point, if you said, oh, I do want to start logging, you just hit start logging. That's the, it's that simple. You don't have to do anything else for setup. But if we want to go through the setup and see what power logging mode looks like, we're going to start here and I'm going to use this as the walkthrough guide, kind of the blue. You could jump to wherever you want, but the blue is going to be a walkthrough guide for us. So you see we're already in single phase. we got our nominal voltage as we expect, nominal frequency because we're in the U.S. it is 60. Voltage ratio and current ratio. Those, I did not mean to click that. I did that before an accident. But if you look at voltage ratio and current ratio, those are both one to one. If you were at a transformer or like um, mains coming in and it you had to step down from CTs and PTs um, from a high voltage application, you would need to change these and then the meter would look as though you're measuring higher voltages and higher currents than you actually are because you have stepped it down through a transformer. Okay, power quality standard, you can choose the standard that you would care about for your specific area or your customer, what their needs, main signaling voltage, and then Auxiliary power flicker, K factor. So you can change all those. You can say next, and you're gonna see it'll jump down to the next thing. Dip, swells, transients. You can see all of these. You can choose the percentage off from nominal that you wanna change. This is new. This is something you could not do in the 1730 series. So this is gonna be a big differentiator between the 1730 series and the 1770 series. Um, I think a lot of customers are gonna jump up to the 7070s 1770 series because they want the capability of adjusting the percentage to failure or percentage to event capture so anyways that's kind of cool in addition to this screen is really is a delight just to navigate through um 
you can see the various things that we're going to be able to hit off of session settings okay so this is the one where you can say you can change the name of your log okay so let's let's say you oh got to do the proper font like YouTube likes it video okay done done 